right, well, hello everyone. First of all, I just want to say congratulations to the graduates. It is an amazing experience for you to be here and to know that you've completed something. So congratulations on that. Uh, my name is Sarah Anderson, as you see right here. And I was born in 19-something <clears throat> and born in Brooklyn, New York. And that was the year that everything became great here. I'm just saying. Um, well, a little bit different from what many probably know about me. My great-grandfather was a Scottish man who fell in love with a really nice Caribbean lady. And they fell in love, they had a child whose name was William Anderson, who was my grandfather. Growing up, although I was born in New York, I grew up in a lot of my younger years in Jamaica. And where my grandfather actually he was an entrepreneur, he was a business owner. He had orange groves, he had cane fields, he had chicken coops, all sorts of farm animals. So I grew up pretty spoiled. And he also sold ice. And I know what you're thinking, if that's possible. And it is because he's an entrepreneur and it worked. So I grew up with the mindset of understanding business ownership and wanting to be that way when I, you know, as I got older. Um, Things kind of took a little bit of a different turn for us and my family. Um, my grandfather passed away, and when that happened, we had to come back to America, not like, you know, anywhere or anything, but it was a big transition for me. A lot of the land that we had that we leased out to other people, we sold. So currently we have probably eight acres left, but it wasn't what we thought we were going to have for our future. So a lot of our plans as a family, my aunts and uncles, everybody, everything changed. So when I came back to the States, it was a big transition for me because going from having people to help me to my mom telling me, you're doing, outside of me, you have no assistance, you have no nannies, you're gonna have to figure this out. It was a big transition for me, huge difference. It was myself, my brother, and at that time as well, my mother separated from her husband. So a lot of transitional areas for me. Um, I grew up in the arts. I love everything in entertainment from singing to dancing, that's what I saw myself doing. I said, I'm gonna own my own business and I'm also gonna be an entertainer. So I was either gonna be the next big executive or Whitney Houston. And that may be why I changed my hair so much. I've always had a love for that. Um, as I got older, I kept that mind state. I've always felt like I had to prove myself because I wanted to be as great as a name that my grandfather had for our family. Um, and when I went to high school, I actually worked with an entertainment company because I said I was going to go into entertainment. I worked with an entertainment company and had a lot of opportunities to work with um, and meet different celebrity clientele. I just really thought that was the direction my life was going to take. Um, so I never actually took thought or even thought that I would go to college. That wasn't my, uh, what I thought to be my destiny. I had no interest in it. Um, although my mom really wanted me to go, my brother, you know, encouraged me to go because he's a military guy. Um, he really wanted, they really wanted me to go that direction. I personally didn't have any desire to do that. So all the way up to my senior year, I hadn't made a decision as far as the college that I was going to attend because I'm going to to my mom, I didn't <coughs> plan on attending college at all. Um, I was so humble. I thought um, I knew everything. So I felt like there was nothing that a teacher could teach me that I wouldn't already know based on my prior experiences. My senior year, because I did track and I did other extracurricular activities, I was offered two scholarships and I, did, I denied one that was out of state. And I ended up going to um, accepting one for a local university, Weber International University in Polk County. I signed the scholarship with no intention of attending. And up until the day that I was going to, the day before I enrolled for, for our orientation, I wasn't going. So my mom kept asking me, Sarah, why aren't you, you know, why aren't you packing? You're supposed to be going. I was like, uh, the day before I was like, you know what? I have to talk to you. I just want to let you know that I really just don't feel like this is for me. It's not the direction I want to go. Um, I don't think I want to do this. And my mom kind of went through a couple different emotions. It's kind of scary when you think about it. She first cried normal. She was like, you know, I really wish you would do this for our family. I think it'll be good for you. And I was saying, you know, no, I, I don't really want to go to college at all. And the crying went to like this mean, aggressive lady. And it was kind of like, okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to give you this option. You're going to be homeless. You're not going to be living with me or you're going to go live in a dorm room. So I was like, oh, that makes it so much easier for me. So I went to school. When going to college, 
for someone that had not had any intention of going to college, I ended up doing everything at my school. I was, I did cheerleading, I was in track, I joined Phi Bay Lamba, I lobbied for the school, for the government, for funds. I ended up doing every single thing, every program, so I really got involved because if I wasn't going to be doing what I wanted to do, which is entertainment, I had to find a way to keep my mind active. Um, during that time, um, I also, whenever I had free time, I tried out for an IFL team, which was at the time the Outlaws, and I danced for them for a while, and I left that as well. So it, it's funny because as I grew up, before getting into college, I've always been known to do a lot, keep myself active, keep myself busy, and no one ever told me, you know, Sarah, just focus on one thing and stay to that one thing. Because I focus on a lot, my mom was like, you know, you're just creative. Be creative in whatever you do. So I've always been able to do a lot of things, but I never really focused. Once I graduated, I ended up doing my associate's, my bachelor's, and I stayed and did my master's. And after I graduated with my master's degree, um, I remember, sorry, just get the part. I interned with a company in New York. It's Rockaware Corporate, which is a fashion label. I interned with their corporate company as well as Signature Apparel. So again, I had a lot of opportunity to work with celebrity clientele, being in the entertainment industry on a different level. Oh, I don't know, sorry. Um, in a different aspect of it. And that caught my interest, again. So when I graduated my, my MBA, I had a decision to make. I was either going to stay in Florida and kind of figure it out with my family, or I was gonna make a big move to New York or California. And I had offers to go back to the internship where I was. I decided that at the time, I don't think I was ready to leave to New York, so I stayed. And when I stayed, I kind of graduated, and like many people, you kind of, you, you may be lost. I was lost, I was just like, I don't know what I'm gonna do, I don't know why I'm here, I thought I was gonna be doing something completely different, and I just stayed there. I ended up working with a car dealership franchise that I worked with a long time before, you know, one of those jobs that you had, and because I developed a relationship with the owner and with the management there, um, they offered me a position, again, to do sales with them. Well, I did that for, for about a year and a half, and after doing that, I still felt, felt empty. Like, I was lost. I didn't have a real direction. Even though they put me on different projects, I just didn't feel like the value, I had enough value invested into the company, or um, I was doing something that made that big of an impact to me, not just the company, but to me. So I started looking for a position, a new position, and what I was looking for was somewhere that I would be able to put all of my skills that I developed doing so many different things um, over the years, as well as a place where I can get along with people that I work with, have that family, quarantine type of environment. Um, so I started putting in applications. And I was looking for a company similar to where I worked in New York. Um, while I was working at the car dealership, I got a text and it says, you know, we reviewed your resume, we want to have you call in for a phone interview. And I've never had that happen. So I was like, well, oh, if they text me, I must be really special. I'm just saying. They actually took the time out to text me. That just shows how good I am. Because again, I'm really humble. Um, after that, I called in, did the phone interview, same process that everyone in here goes through. Came in for a physical uh, in-face interview. Um, I actually interviewed with Chastity, and um, I was told that I got the position. And what I had applied for was a team lead, so I went through the program that was called MIT, which is Management and Training. Um, they were looking for a group of individuals that would be able to manage and train um, all of you individuals now. I went through the MIT process, and it was a little bit it was really different from this. It was very straight. We had longer hours. There were. Yeah. I hate to cut you off, but we need to. What else? What's the hell? I don't know. Okay. It's mom with Stay with us. No. Yeah. Ten. Really? Nine minutes and thirty-three seconds. <gasps> yeah, talk too much. Okay, I'll cut out all of it. <laughs> cut out all of it. You gotta say something. I can go from. I know what I can cut out. I can cut out a big chunk of it. I got. I know what I cut out. No, I'm looking at it right now. I can cut out all of it. I didn't know how long it would be. So, anyways, um, after coming here and going through the MIT process, I've had the opportunity to go 
into not only managing SR3, I was one of the first people to manage SR3 along with Alejandro Beta. I went from that to work at home and currently I am the operations manager um, of SoftRock. And what I'll say is out of everything that I've been through, um, I've always had a goal on what I wanted to accomplish, but the most important thing that I had to learn was to enjoy the journey. So if I can leave any of you with any type of tip, is while you're going through the training process, while you're going through all of those things with the manager, yes, you do have goals that you have to achieve, but enjoy the journey. Really take time to look around and see who's there, get to know the people that you're working with, because this is something that should be seen as long-term. Yeah.